everyone, and welcome to the Monarca Minerals Live Investment Summit Day, hosted by SIX. I'm joined today by Carlos Espinosa, President, and CEO, and Director of the company, as well as Mike Smith, their Executive Vice President of Exploration and Qualified Person. The team's going to walk us through a company presentation, and after, our presenters will be accepting some questions in a live Q&A. You can submit any questions you have using the panel found on the right-hand side of your screen at any time. And as always, this summit is being recorded and it will be available to watch afterwards on six.com. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Carlos to kick things off. Thank you, Cameron. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for taking the time to um, to learn a little bit more about uh, Monarca Minerals. Um, for those who are new uh, to our story, Monarca is a junior exploration company with assets in Mexico. We have three assets two in the state of Durango, one in the state of uh, Chihuahua, called San Jose. Uh, today we're going to talk about the three projects, but we want to, to really spend time uh, updating of what is happening on the San Jose project, where we are about to start a 5,000 meters uh, drilling program. Um, and we're going to also review quickly the other two projects. So um, this is slide, you know, uh, lawyers ask us to present it all the time, so there is it. But uh, here uh, is a, just a quick snapshot about the three projects. San Jose, which is a, a polymetallic property with almost 6,000 hectares. And, and I don't want to, to go in detail about the projects because uh, Michael Smith, who is our QP and Executive VP of Exploration, going to uh, talk in more detail about the projects, just to mention uh, San Jose here. And there are two projects that you see in the, in the center of the slide, uh, Tejamen and San Lucas. We own the three properties and uh, we are very, very confident on the, on the potential on these assets. And uh, very happy to have uh, Michael with us because he has over four years experience working in companies from exploration companies to large uh, producers um, in the US and in Latin America working for more than 10 years in Mexico. So it's, uh, it's a big, big asset to have him uh, with us. Um, just briefly, I want to touch about the capital structure. Uh, uh, the exchange is, uh, or the, the stock, I'm sorry, is, is trading around five and a half cents today. Uh, the last few days, you know, the market has been very, very tough on the mining industry. Um, However, we are okay in terms of cash for our presentation, uh, for a uh, um, journey program, I'm sorry. We have around 120 million uh, shares outstanding, and uh, the value of the company is around uh, $13 million. I don't want to spend much time on this slide, which is uh, the presentation of the board and management. I just want to mention that we have a very uh, experienced team uh, with different skills um, from finance, law, technical aspects that allow us to, to build a, a very strong team. Despite we are a small company, uh, it's a very, very strong team. So we are confident with the, our capacity to move forward the business. And uh, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to pass. Uh, the microphone to, to Michael Smith uh, to start talking about the three products that we have. Mike, over to you. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, here we have a map that just indicates the general location of our projects. Uh, the, the, the San Jose project is in northern Chihuahua, very close to the border with New Mexico. It's only about 30 kilometers south of the border with New Mexico. It's almost 6,000 hectares, and what we see there is polymetallic sarn mineralization associated with uh, some pretty impressive gold and silver grades, too. Uh, it's very similar geologically to the Bismarck mine, which just shut uh, earlier this year after about uh, 20, almost 30 years of, of production. Uh, and it's a very similar uh, deposit to what we see at the surface in San Jose. And it's kind of our exploration model in terms of what we're looking for, the kinds and styles of mineralization. And we are expecting to start uh, this Thursday 
uh, coming this week, uh, the 5,000 meter drilling program that is going to be testing geophysical targets primarily. We also have two projects in the state of Durango, very close to Durango City. The Tahamen project is the only project we have that has uh, an established resource based on historic drilling of almost 29 million ounces of silver at an average grade of 45 grams per ton. It's very superficial mineralization that extends to depth. Uh, the depth uh, potential and the high-grade feeder veins has not been drilled. Uh, all the drilling that's been done has been very shallow drilling there uh, to date. We also have the San Lucas project, which is only about 50 kilometers uh, east of the Tahaman project. Uh, it's a project that's very close to Argonaut Gold San Augustine mine, which is now in production, open pit gold mining. And you can actually see the mine from the uh, ridge line where the mineralization is exposed at the surface in the San Lucas project. So all three of these projects I'll be talking about in a bit more detail. This map is more of an introduction into the, in terms of the general location. Next slide, please, Carlos. As I mentioned, the San Jose project is very close to the border with New Mexico. It's easy to get to. There's good established uh, roads in the area. It's an agricultural community. And importantly, it's only about 50 kilometers northwest of the Bismarck mine. Uh, we have great access to the project being an agricultural settlement. It's a very prosperous uh, 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 Pueblo that's in the area. Lots of agriculture, uh, growing crops largely for export and primarily jalapeno peppers. Uh, the project was acquired in 2000. 2019, uh, we have 100% interest in the project in exchange for total cash payments of $150,000. The previous owners retain a 2% NSR of which we can buy half of it uh, in a single payment of $100,000 down the road once commercial production has started. The mineralization expressed at the surface is a bunch of small mines, about a dozen small mines. Uh, all of them are very, very, most of them are just surface diggings. There are two shafts that go down to about five to 10 meters in depth. Uh, there's never been any significant production on the property. In the 1970s, there was some reported production of fairly high grade uh, values of gold and, and silver along with base metals. But no draw, drilling has ever been done at the property, which is one of the attractions to us. Uh, so we entered into an agreement uh, to purchase the property. And based on surface exploration work, we decided to do a geophysical survey over the area where the mines are located. Next slide, please, Carlos. As I mentioned, the uh, exploration model for the San Jose project is the Bismarck mine. In the right-hand upper corner, you can see a cross-section through the Bismarck mine. In purple is a mineralizing intrusive, and the reds and the yellows and the, the black areas are mineralization on the margin of the intrusive, which is basically hosted in scars and carbonate replacement mineralization. On the left-hand slide side of the slide of the image, you see two different colors of green and blue. Those are the uh, host rocks for the mineralization, their limestone sequence. Uh, and you can see importantly that the surface expression of the Bismarck mine was very minimal, uh, very thin veins manifested at the surface. And what that, those thin veins were indicating uh, was leakage of mineralization from a much, much larger deposit at depth. And so that's basically what we're chasing in the San Jose project. And they found the project, uh, uh, the Peñolas did for the Bismarck mine, they, they did a geophysical survey in the early 90s and came up with strong IP response uh, associated with the sulfide mineralization at depth. Uh, and uh, they started a drilling program and came up with an initial uh, historic uh, uh, inferred resource of 12.8 million tons at 52 gram per ton silver and 11% zinc. That's about, depending on what metal prices you look at, uh, three to 400 gram per ton silver equivalent. And we see mineralization very similar to what you see in the image and cross section, except that we have uh, some uh, mineralization at the margin of three of the different intrusives that we have uh, at the San Jose project. But we have a very large magnetic anomaly and above and surrounding that, uh, we see additional indications of sulfide mineralization based on the IP survey and the chargeability anomalies that are present. 
And the uh, mineralization that we see at the surface is large areas of scarn. It's hosted in limestone, but we also have uh, endoscarn, which is alteration in the intrusive rocks, which is indicating it's a, a significant system with all the scarn that we see at the surface, uh, both exoscarn and endoscarn. Uh, we have three different uh, phases of intrusives. There's an early monzonite, which is associated with, uh, with mineralization, an intermediate age granite diorite, and late diorite dikes. And the diorite dikes are above the magnetic anomaly. So we think that that's basically the superficial expression of the large magnetic anomaly we have in the southwest corner of the geophysical survey area. And the exoscarn mineralization is dominantly uh, grossularite um, plus or minus diopside. And so we see extensive mineralization. And another important feature that we see at the surface is we see hydrous retrograde silica plus clay alteration overprinting along with uh, quartz veins, the uh, earlier formed scarn. And it's in those locations where we tend to have the higher uh, precious metal values of gold and, and silver. The, this map indicates the generalities of the geophysical survey and the land position in the upper, in the right hand side of the slide is the land package that we have. Uh, it's very underexplored. We've uh, done significant exploration work in the area where the oval is. That's where the existing mine workings are and that's where we did the geophysical survey primarily in that, within that oval shaped area. And so the mineralization that we saw at the surface was significant. We did a surface uh, chip channel sampling program across the mineralized structures. Uh, we took 167 chip channel samples and we had grades up to 10, uh, almost 10 grams per ton gold and up to 257 gram per ton silver uh, at the south end of the property is where the high grade mineralization was discovered in scar and veins hosted in limestone. And there are two parallel veins of uh, hydrous retrograde mineralization, the silica plus, uh, plus clay mineralization that's associated with the higher grades and the scarn right there. So based on the surface sampling and mapping that we did, we decided to do a geophysical survey and that's uh, the, the results of which are indicated in the lower left hand side, the two images in color. And I usually start with a magnetic uh, uh, survey which is indicating a very large uh, magnetic anomaly in the southwest corner of the survey grid and uh, indicated in red and pinks. So that's indicating a buried intrusive, uh, which we see expressed at the surface as the diorite dikes, it looks like. And we also see a smaller anomaly uh, in red to the north, which is uh, probably another buried intrusive. And so associated with this area where we have the magnetic signature indicating the intrusives, mineralizing intrusives, we have the IP anomalies, which are on the left-hand side of the two colored images. And we see very strong IP anomalies in the area of the northern intrusive and, and along the northern margin of the uh, southwestern, southwesterly larger uh, uh, magnetic anomaly. And so we see a total strike length of uh, almost three kilometers of strike length in terms of where we see the IP anomalies. And you can see that the IP anomalies extend further to the southeast. It's just cut off because that's where we terminated the, the, the survey grid. So we see significant extension to the uh, southeast. And we just did a program uh, uh, about a month, about two months ago, where we looked at areas to the south and found very large areas of uh, dolomitization in limestones, which is associated with the scar mineralization, associated uh, with also cross-cutting iron oxide veinlets, which are which was which was sulfide mineralization, and so we expect to be following up on that down the road to expand the area of mineralization because we have a lot of ground to the southeast, which is very underexplored, and there's a lot of potential and upside with that. Next slide, please. This map shows the drilling program that we've set out. Uh, we've built about 15 kilometers, uh, rebuilt about 15 kilometers of existing roads. And then uh, to get access to the property, the, the property is about 15 kilometers west of Guadalupe de Victoria. Uh, from a hilltop, you can see Guadalupe de Victoria in the valley to the east. And in addition, uh, we've uh, got the drill holes uh, indicated uh, in blue. We've got 15 sites which have now been uh, determined and laid out on the ground and field checked, looking at local geological conditions to make some modifications to the drill holes in terms of, uh, in some cases, position, but mostly in terms of uh, whether we stay with a vertical hole to drill uh, an IP anomaly and a chargeability anomaly, or do we angle it to go across mineralized structures that we see at the surface. 
So all of the drill pads have now been built uh, and new roads have been built. You can see in some cases some new roads to some of the drill holes are in blue. Those are new roads that are being built which follow and are guided by the environmental permit that we now have in hand to do the construction and to do the drilling. The area, the, uh, the polygon that you see in kind of a brownish color, uh, that's the uh, indicating the area where we have surface rights through a negotiated agreement with the uh, Colonia in the area. They own the surface. Uh, and so we have an agreement with them to pay them some annual fees in order to be able to uh, do, do disturbance at the surface and build new roads and drill pads. And all of this work is being done in very much in conjunction with the local community, with the Colonia. Uh, we are uh, in, in very good condition and shape with the relationship with the local community. Uh, we uh, are very much involved with them and employ people on a local basis and can get equipment from a, on a local basis because it is an agricultural community they have some equipment which we have utilized to build uh, and rebuild uh, some of the new roads that we have uh, to get to the drill pads which are indicated in this map next slide please I mentioned that we started uh, building roads. Uh, the, the grader that you see there is owned by the Colonia. Uh, we've uh, uh, rented that grader and we also brought in a, a bulldozer uh, that uh, was provided uh, by uh, the municipality in Ascension. And so we're utilizing equipment that's owned by these government ent entities and we're paying for the use in, of that equipment and the operator and paying for fuel. The upper right hand photo is the first drill pad that we started building. Uh, that was built about two weeks ago and so we've uh, finalized the construction of all the drill pads now and are ready to start drilling and we expect to be drilling uh, Thursday of this coming week. Next slide please. And you can see in this image the roads that have been uh, built. The roads that are in the darker colors, the, the black and the kind of a reddish color, those were existing roads. The new roads are indicated in blue to each one of the drill sites. So the we put in about two kilometers, three kilometers of roads now, of new roads in the area, which is fully permitted and, and in agreement with the uh, local community. And so we're ready to initiate the drilling program. And in fact, I'll be going there next week uh, to kick off the drilling program just to make sure that all sample handling is being done correctly and the project is uh, well maintained and covered by the Mexican geologists uh, that we have uh, at site. Next slide please. This slide indicates a bit of the objective in terms of the drilling. Uh, this is drilling that uh, we plan to do on one of the drill holes to the north. Uh, in the area of plan drilling and you can see uh, at the top is a strip map through the geology. The pink is the uh, is a monzonite that's altered uh, and there's mineralization along the contact with the monzonite to the rocks in blues and greens uh, to the left. And those are areas where we see surface scar mineralization and breaches and all of the blue area you see the limestones have been dolomitized which is uh, indicating the potential for a significant and large mineralized system at depth. And then the uh, maps that we see in cross section at the bottom, the upper one of those two, uh, in the pink and the red is a very strong IP anomaly associated with the chargeability anomaly. And so the drilling is in most cases very simple and straightforward. We're drilling the IP anomaly, which we expect to be indicating and show sulfide mineralization. And in combination with the base metal and precious metal mineralization we see at the surface, we think that at the surface we have leakage from a large system at depth which is indicated by the IP anomaly. So in most cases the drilling that we're doing is being done to target the IP anomalies which are indicating uh, larger sulfide uh, areas of, and of extensive sulfide mineralization at depth. Next slide please. So I mentioned already that we have the surface rights agreement with the colony. The environmental assessment report has been uh, signed off on. Uh, we've engaged uh, lane drilling to come in and start the drilling next week for the 5,000 meter drilling program. They'll be coming in with a uh, wheel mounted uh, RC drill rig along with the booster compressor and so everything is set up for them to arrive next week and set up to start the drilling on Thursday. And we've also, uh, the, the geophysical work that was done by, was done by Matrix Geotechnologies, they did a good job for us on the project. 
And uh, I mentioned uh, earlier that we looked at areas to the south where we looked at the alteration and mineralization in the limestones. And we see an extension of about three kilometers to the southeast of surface alteration, which we believe is going to be indicating when we do get another geophysical survey done there, additional IP targets to the south. So we've expanded the exploration area by about 13 square kilometers uh, in the area of the altered limestones that we see. Next slide, please. I'll talk a bit now about the Tahaman project. It's located in Durango. It's about 1,700 hectares. It's an area that, where drilling was done in the early 2000s. Uh, it's easy to get to. It's about 10 kilometers southwest of the town in Nuevo Ideal, which has paved highway connection all the way to the capital city of Durango. There lot, there's a lot of uh, development uh, and agriculture in the area. Uh, there's power resources, water resources in the area, as well as skilled labor. Uh, we see that the mineralization that was drilled historically uh, was uh, all done with the idea of having uh, open pit mining uh, related to the uh, surface mineralization. So all of that drilling was done to only about 200 meters of depth. And one of the things that we discovered uh, about a year and a half ago, relogging all of the uh, cuttings that we have from the historical drilling as well as the core, is that we have very high grade feeder veins uh, that are striking northeasterly, cutting underneath both the Montos deposit and the Cerro Prieto uh, deposit. And we have intercepts in the historic drilling that's been done of up to six meters uh, grading 1400 gram per ton silver along with 5% combined lead zinc. So there's a lot of upside in terms of the uh, mineralization that we see. And right now, uh, what we're more focused on is to follow up on the high grade feeder veins uh, at the same time as doing drilling uh, through the existing resource targeting the high grade feeder veins. So the current resource is about uh, 20 million tons at a grade of 45 grams per ton and uh, giving us a total of almost 29 million ounces of resources in the inferred category. So again, we want to do drilling there down the road, uh, confirming the existing resource, but primarily targeting the high grade feeder veins. Next slide, please. And this slide just gives you a, a bit more of a summary uh, on the project. The upper right-hand corner uh, image shows where drilling has historically been done. The Los Montos deposit and the Cerro Prieto deposit are both open. Uh, the Los Montos deposit is primarily open and extends to the southeast and east. Uh, but again, we want to follow up on the high-grade feeder veins. And then we also have the Cerro Prieto project, which is a very thick vein, which has surface expression. And we want to be drilling that uh, beyond uh, 200 meters at depth to get a clearer picture on the potential underground resource that we have there. The historic drilling that was done was, uh, as I mentioned, primarily done uh, in order to look at an open pitable resource. Uh, the 45 gram per ton average grade may not seem like much, but uh, a good analog to what we have at the Tahaman project is that uh, the Rochester mine that Coor has in central Nevada, they've been open pit mining low grade silver and doing heap leaching uh, with cyanide. Uh, the average grade that they put to their, their leach pads is 20 to 22 grams per ton gold and our resource has an average grade of about double that. And so early testing was done to look at the recoverability in a heap leaching scenario and we see uh, recoveries in, uh, in the range of the 50 to 60 percent which is consistent with what the Rochester mine has. Uh, the table in the lower left-hand corner shows some of the uh, high-grade feeder vein intercepts that we have. Uh, uh, for example, if you take a look at uh, probably the eighth or tenth one down, MMT 141, uh, that had an intercept of 80 meters of 417 gram per ton silver. So we think that uh, beyond the disseminated mineralization we have uh, uh, in the margins and away from the veins forming these Monto style deposits, which are hosted in volcanic rocks, that that's the kind of high grade underground or potential underground uh, mineralization that could be discovered by additional drilling. All of the mineralization and Tahaman is hosted in volcanic rocks. And uh, what we're interested in seeing is uh, where those high-grade feeder veins come uh, from depth and in, into the base of the volcanic section. We uh, have uh, optimism that we'll have uh, Manto-style deposits at the base of the volcanic section there. So we're anxious to get into Tahaman uh, as soon as possible. 
and uh, we think that it's got a great potential for significant upside in terms of the total resource and in terms especially of the high-grade feeder veins of which we've uh, discovered there are probably there's one in the Cerro Prieto and it looks like there are three or four of them in the Los Montos deposit all strike all striking northeasterly. Next slide please. The San Lucas project is a 100% owned project. Uh, it's uh, very close to the Tahaman project and very close particularly to Argonaut Gold's uh, San Agustin mine, which is an open pit gold mine. Uh, you can see the gold mine from the ridge line where surface mineralization has been discovered with very high grades uh, at the San Lucas project. The mineralization is hosted in the uh, concessions that we have there in volcanic rocks. Uh, underneath that, we think that we probably have carbonate rocks which have never been drilled. Again, similar to to Tahaman is drilling the high grade veins we see at the surface, these mineralized shear zones, and where they come into the base of the volcanics and with limestones in the area, we expect to have significant potential for star mineralization associated with the silver and base metal mineralization that we see at the surface. Uh, we did recently some sampling, well it wasn't that recently, it was about uh, about eight years ago on the El Doctor Zone, which is outcropping on the concessions that we have there. Uh, there are uh, a portion, we've got about 270 meters of strike length on two parallel vein sets that we see there, which are part of the main mineralized shear zone, which strikes north northeasterly. <clears throat> the exploration that we did there as we took 89 chip channel samples at the surface across the El Doctor Zone, and we saw grades up to 110 grams per ton gold with 168 gram per ton silver with base metals. Uh, the average grade of the samples we took, excluding that very high grade value, uh, was 3.22 grams per ton gold at the surface. So there's significant mineralization that needs to be drilled, particularly at depth, and we uh, would be in a position to uh, get in there and do additional drilling there when we expand the land package. Uh, we uh, have been in talks with the owner of the surrounding concessions. Uh, so far they seem amenable to doing a deal that we can acquire uh, those concessions and expand our land package to about 700 hectares and so that's a work in progress. Next slide please. Okay, this is where I hand it back to Carlos Espinosa and we'll take questions after we get done with the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Um, I, I, I want to, to present this slide, this uh, comparable analysis with some other uh, exploration companies uh, in silver and in the, in the Americas. And it is important to, to see, to review this these numbers because uh, as you could see Monarca is uh, presenting as a as an undervaluated company uh, among the peers which is a great opportunity for investors to to enter on an early stage to the company and grow with the company especially in a moment like the like now we are about to start drilling uh, we see a lot of uh, upside on, on, on Monarca and our properties Currently, we see uh, we are trading like a less than 50 cents uh, per equivalent uh, ounce of silver, which is around 60% below the average. So that's an, an, another way to present um, the potential that the company has uh, uh, growing in, 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 into their Mexican properties. And also, I want to spend uh, a couple of minutes talking about social management. Uh, Already Michael mentioned that we have an excellent relationship with the uh, community in San Jose. We're working with local authorities. We are hiring local people. And what we've been uh, doing is really to build uh, a relationship with the community and became part of the community. We are not uh, outsiders. Uh, we're in the houses in the, in, 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 in the village. Uh, we hire local people as much as we can and we really try to integrate with the community and it's working well so uh we have a very good engagement with the community in san jose uh with the hamming we are um implementing a different program because it's a different relationship that we have with with the community there and san lucas currently because this is still a small project and we are in the process to acquire more assets uh, we have an early stage uh, community engagement but we are working with all of them on a different phases. So the idea is to have to have to or to create an umbrella that 
provides uh, enough uh, relationship with the community's industry properties. Um, so just uh, well, closing with companies or people asking why I'm on Arca Minerals uh, compared to many other companies that are around in, in, in the market. And um, there are some reasons uh, that should be considered as, as, as one alternative. One is, of course, uh, the, the drilling program we are about to start. This drilling program is going to really prove the thesis that we have been uh, building over the time initially when uh, our geologist Mike and Carlos Pacheco uh, chipped some samples uh, and, and on the surface. Then we did the uh, geophysics that really, really bring strong results. And now the next phase is to start this drilling program that I am very, very confident we're going to have a, also a great results. So this is a, one of the reasons investors should consider Monarch as a good option. Um, the other option, of course, is we have a, a portfolio of good, of good assets at Tejamen and San Lucas uh, on top of San Jose are also another good opportunities for us to continue developing. And it's going to be uh, uh, adding value to the company and to shareholders. And and the third one I already mentioned, it's still an evaluated company. So this is the time to, to jump in and join the ride with us. So with this, I'm closing the presentation and opening the, the floor for a Q&A. Any questions, we're happy to, to answer. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Carlos. I think that was a great presentation. Uh, as you say, let's move on to the live Q&A. I'd like to remind everyone in the audience that you can ask questions using the Q&A panel found on the right-hand side of your screen at any time. Uh, and to begin, an audience member uh, has this to say. They have a number of questions, so we'll just go through them one at a time, I think, is best. But many thanks for the update and the geological insights, and congrats on getting all permits and finally start drilling. Uh, his first question reads, given the logjam at, uh, at the assay labs, when can shareholders expect first drill results to be released? Right now, based on the best information we have, is we plan on using uh, one of the uh, certified uh, ISO certified labs in Chihuahua. Uh, they have prep facilities there, and generally what they do is they send the pulps off to their mother lab, and typically that goes to Vancouver. Right now, the wait times that we have been told from the lab uh, for the assay turnaround is about a month. Uh, in other projects I'm familiar with, the, pro the wait is more like two months. So if we get started drilling next week, we'll have samples sent out by approximately the end of this month. And so we're looking at having assay results depending on actual turnaround. Uh, it could be as early as the end of September, but it could easily turn into October depending on assay lab turnaround. Uh, you know, the, the real turnaround, oftentimes uh, labs will give you a, a, a quicker turnaround than the reality is at the end. So we're looking at uh, the end of September, uh, probably best case scenario, and it could go well into October for actually getting the assay results. Okay, great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, the audience member's next question is, given the stock's performance in the year to date uh, and it underperforming, can you give any information on what the reasons for this persistent selling might be over so many months? Well, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a difficult question to answer because, uh, I mean, um, investors have different strategy. But if you see, um, uh, we're going back one year ago, we raised a capital $3 million. And at that time, the the share price was $0.05. Cents. We raised $3 million. And, and the share um, performed really, really well, up to around 15 sometimes $0.20. Cents. And uh, one of the problems we, we faced was uh, the delay on the drilling program. And it's highly related to, to the COVID. Uh, Mexican government offices closed. So we couldn't get the environmental permit earlier. So all this delay um, creates, I think, uh, some impatience on, on all, some of the investors. And, and I'm sure some of them uh, sold their, their shares um, early and take some, some of the gains. Um, and the last few weeks, especially the last two weeks, has been very, very tough for all mining, not, for, not only for Junior or not only for Monarca. So um, you could see as a, as a challenge or really as an opportunity because the price is very, very low today. So that's the moment really to invest and, and, and going back on the next swing of, 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 of the share. I'm, I'm confident we want to improve uh, the share price in the next few weeks. 
Thank you, Carlos. Uh, his next question is, uh, what are the cal catalysts that you would want to highlight to convince the market that Monarca is a promising investment? Uh, probably uh, I should start on Mike if you want to jump in, but I think uh, one of the uh, uh, key catalysts is going to be the result for the dream program. And, and it's, it's a property with a lot of, uh, of merit to, to become something very interesting. So this drilling program is just the beginning. So we really are expecting, and we believe this could be a, a, a large, a large uh, deposit. So um, one step at a time, but for now, the, the main focus is to bring the results to the markets on the drilling program. And I don't know, Mike, if you want to add up some comments, but uh, I think. Yeah, we, we have leads on a couple of properties in Mexico that look attractive to us. You know, one of the things that we focused on is that, uh, you know, looking for projects that are underappreciated. Uh, and that's exactly what San Jose was. I looked at it uh, first time about four years ago and was very impressed with the mineralization I saw at the surface and saw it uh, potentially indicating a very large mineralized system. And so uh, other companies may have looked at it. I know that Peñolas was looking at it. Uh, they wanted to acquire it too, but the owners uh, prefer to do a deal with us. And so the uh, modus operandi that we have is not so much look at properties that another company has already established resources at, but to look for properties that are just underappreciated, you know, with the experience we have uh, in the company uh, with myself and, and geologists boots on the ground, uh, we think we have an advantage of looking at properties that are maybe just held by some local concession owners, local people in the community like San Jose. So one of the things that uh, we plan to do is start looking at other properties uh, later on this fall when we get done with this drilling program. Uh, we'll get the drilling program program done, it's probably going to take six to eight weeks at least to finish the drilling and we'll be waiting for assay results. So one of the things I want to do is to uh, start looking at other properties later in the fall, the October, November timeframe. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Carlos. Um, and his final question is, what are the long-term plans for the three projects? Okay. Well, starting with San Jose, we want to develop that, that property. Um, the idea for us it's, uh, it's going all the way to production. That would be the ideal scenario. So that's the plan A for us. Um, and and it's, it's, it's a long way uh, from where we are today until then, but that's really what we want to do. Um, for the Hamming, um, we want to, to advance in exploration because the exploration that we have in, in the Hamming is very shallow. So we want to, to go deeper and understanding better what's the, uh, on, 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 under the surface. Um, if I'm right, we, we just uh, drill up to 250 meters. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's a lot to learn about, about the Hammond as well. And in the case of uh, San Lucas, uh, Mike mentioned, we want to, to buy a large uh, or larger uh, land package that's gonna give us the opportunity to manage around 700 to 800 hectares, which is a very decent size. Um, for a property, a very good property. So as soon as we uh, can acquire these properties, we can start also doing some exploration and then make decisions decision what's gonna be the future for that, for that asset. Yeah, and I'll add to that a bit. Uh, regarding San Jose, we think it's a very underexplored property. Obviously, we have a drilling program coming up, but I mentioned in the presentation of the geological setting that we have there is that the IP anomalies extend to the southeast. How far, we don't know, but we do see mineralization and alteration in the limestones for up to three kilometers to the southeast from the edge of the current known geophysical anomaly, the IP work. And one of the things that I'd also like to start doing this fall is initiate just to give us a bullseye, a bit of a bullseye on the property. It's such a large area that one of the things I want to do is to go to all the drainages, draining the areas where we see mineralization and alteration at the surface and do a stream sediment pan concentrate sampling program to give us some definition about what areas, what drainages seem to have the best potential for follow-up uh, detailed mapping and sampling to see what we get at the surface. We see to the south 
monzonite dikes, which are mineralized intruding into the limestones. The limestones are dolomitized along with calcite veining and abundant stock works of iron oxides on fractures, which were pyrite veins, pyrite masses uh, in, the, in the limestone. So we think we have significant potential to the southeast, which is very underexplored. And so one of the things we want to do is to get in there and do uh, initial stream sediment pan concentrate sampling and detailed mapping and sampling at the surface to see what the full extent of mineralization is to the south. Great. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Carlos. Um, <clears throat> wonderful. And we also have some questions that have come in in advance that I'd like to get to. Um, the first is, what kind of mineralization are you expecting to encounter in the drilling? Well, the, the mineralization that we see at the surface is basically uh, a thin veins expressed at the surface in an area where there are large large areas of uh, scarn mineralization, both endoscarn and exoscarn at the surface. Uh, and so we think that that's all leakage from something much larger at depth. So as we're doing this drilling that's starting next week, uh, what I'm anticipating that we will see drilling the IP and the chargeability anomalies is that we'll see sulfide mineralization at depth. <laughs> and we do expect that sulfide mineralization to have a strong element of base metals along with gold and silver because what we see at the surface shows significant base metal grades uh, commonly with lead and often with zinc and, and copper mineralization at the surface and those thin structures which are mineralized in and of themselves are not economic deposits uh, because they're very thin at the surface so what we're targeting is the large areas of sulfide mineralization which are indicated by the geophysical work the IP survey principle uh, at depth, and that's what we're going to be starting to drill. So we expect to see some significant uh, base metal grades along with precious metal grades. Uh, the area where we got the almost 10 gram per ton uh, gold mineralization with about 250 gram per ton silver mineralization in the south end of the area of where the mines are uh, uh, expressed at the surface, um, there's two parallel veins there that are look like they're a meter to two meters thick with uh, grades of several ppm gold and some much higher than than that and the first hole we're going to drill is to be angled cutting across those two structures hitting the first one at a depth of about 100 meters and the second one at a depth of about 130 meters so we'll get that drilling done and uh, see what kind of precious metal grades we get uh, associated with that and one of the reasons we're seeing significant precious metal grades is much of the mineralization is not on the margins of a causative intrusive it's above a causative intrusive which is at depth and so typically in many mineralized systems when you get above a mineral Rising intrusive, you tend to get high metal grades. And so, let alone the base metal potential, we see, certainly see the potential for significant gold and uh, silver mineralization. So, we are pretty optimistic about this drilling that we're coming up, and we expect to see some significant grades. And uh, when we get the assays in, we'll have it measured. Great. Thanks for that, Mike. What areas offer the best opportunity for more exploration at San Jose? I already touched on that. That's the area to the uh, southeast. Uh, but we did recently discover that about a kilometer and a half to the southwest of the area where we plan on doing drilling, uh, that there's another monzonite intrusive uh, up in the foothills along with uh, altered and uh, fragments of rock and scarn in the drainages that drain that area. So let alone to the south, we also see something to the southwest uh, that looks pretty interesting. And so there's just a lot of follow-up mapping outside of the area where the geophysical grid was done that has significant potential for mineralization and we could easily see a follow-up expansion of the geophysical grid uh, to the south and other areas maybe to the southwest and the southeast. Okay great. With some sampling having resulted in high gold and silver values, do you think that there's opportunity to focus on those? Yeah, I already touched on that a bit. Uh, that's primarily at the very south extent uh, that the Guadalupana uh, vein, uh, which is scar mineralization. There's scar veins hosted in limestone. So I've already talked about that a bit, but uh, you know, the kind of metal grades that we see there were really surprising to me. I mean, I expected to get uh, a, a part of a PPM uh, gold or uh, gold with some tens of PPM silver, but we got grades significantly higher than that. And so I'm pretty optimistic about the potential for significant precious metal mineralization associated with the alteration in the area of uh, mineralization that we see at the surface. Okay, thank you. Uh, and are you planning to raise more money soon? Uh, we are planning to. We are we are okay for the uh, 
for the drilling program. We have enough money to complete all the drilling program and the labs and so on. But uh, definitely we are planning to, to, to raise more money probably by the end of this year uh, to continue developing San Jose and probably to, to do some acquisitions. Okay. Um, um, Oh, and go ahead, Mike. The, yeah, and the drilling that we're doing, uh, we got a very good uh, drilling rate uh, based on the footage rates that we're looking at at 5,000 meters. We're looking at about $250,000 in direct drilling cost. It typically comes out a bit more than that because they, uh, you know, doing a downhole survey on the drill holes. Uh, but we're looking at nominally $250,000. And then the assaying is going to be probably in the $100,000 to $150,000 range. Uh, we plan on doing uh, assaying for both the uh, fire assay for the gold content and then doing a multi-element determination for the silver and base metals doing uh, with an, uh, an ICP finish. And so uh, the, the, if you look at the direct drilling costs and the expected assay costs and the labor in the field, we're looking at about 500, maybe $600,000 to complete this first 5,000 meters of drilling. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, how much has COVID-19 impacted your plans this year? Yeah, well, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it, it had been an issue. Fortunately for, for the company, for the communities where we are, uh, COVID didn't affect that much to the health of the people. But in terms of the business, it had been a, a problem because uh, Mexico had uh, several lockdowns and uh, they shut down the government offices. And, and when they finally reopened it, uh, they opened it just for a few days a week, and it was really, really complicated to to go through the process of the permitting. Usually, uh, uh, based on our experience, uh, the permitting could take a couple of months, um, but now it was really months and months and months, probably six months or more uh, because of the COVID. So uh, now that it's uh, people, more people vaccinated in Mexico and more organized and educated regarding the COVID, we are expecting to have something more manageable. And uh, at least where we are now, which is very isolated, uh, we can work properly. Uh, Lane, which is the drilling company that is coming with us, and as well as, well as our team, are following the protocol to avoid any COVID issues. So we are expecting from now on to be more close to normal. But uh, the last few months have been challenging because of COVID. Okay, thank you. Well, I think that's all the questions we have for today at this point. So I'd like to thank not only uh, yourself, Carlos, but also you, Mike, for coming in today, as well as all of the attendees that have come in live today to be a part of this event. Now, if you didn't get a chance to ask a question or if you think of one afterwards, uh, don't worry. We'll be sending out a short survey for you to fill out where you can get in contact with the Monarca Minerals team. You can also, of course, find more information at monarcaminerals.com. Uh, and with that, Carlos, Mike, I'm going to hand it back to you for some closing remarks. Uh, thank you, Cameron. I just want to thank you for organizing the, 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 the summit and uh, a special thanks to the audience to, to attend today and uh, learn more. Thank you for the questions. And of course, we are open to have a further discussion if someone wants to, to follow up with us. And uh, just have a great week and thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for everybody for listening. And I just wanted to uh, reinforce uh, the the exploration potential at the San Jose project uh, 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 in particular. Uh, I've worked on a lot of projects in scattered lo locations around the Americas. And uh, the, the magnitude and the intensity of the IP anomalies we see, uh, coupled with the mineralization we see at the surface, gives me uh, a much higher degree of optimism about success and exploration potential than I've had on uh, it's comparable with some of the best projects I've worked on in, in, in South America or North America so we're very excited about the potential and I'm expecting to have success in our drilling program we'll get clear indications of mineralization we'll have to wait to see what the assays are telling us and that obviously gives us additional targets for follow-up drilling for the second phase of drilling in San Jose Okay. Well, thank you again, gentlemen, for coming on today. And like you said, Carlos, I hope you guys both have great weekends. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.